During the turbulent 60s, we saw the inner cities torn by racial strife like no other this country has witnessed. The turmoil waged externally and internally. assassinated and murdered. And new leaders sprang upon the local and international scene. Sunday. My wife and I and the children had been downtown to a breakfast. And on the way back home, we'd stopped at my wife's mother's house in Harlem. And we were sitting around the television watching, I think, a broadcast of a Russian ballet. And the program was interrupted, and the announcer said that he had been shot. I went to the Audubon with my 16-year-old son, Billy. and. As we even walked into the ballroom, I felt that people seemed edgy that day. Uh, I, by the time we got there, I think half the ballroom was filled, but we did get seats around the 10th or 11th row on the left-hand side. And it happened to be just right across from the center of where that uh, incident of uh, get your hands out of my pocket happened. We looked at each other, and there was not much to say. We knew him. The children knew him. He'd come to our home. We drove home and left the children with somebody, and then we drove back to Harlem because that's where he was, and that's where we felt the need, the need to be at that time. You know, the news of his death just... Um actually split me open in a lot of ways. I thought that actually that was a declaration of war. I mean, when I heard that, you know, I remember Leroy McLucas came, he was weeping that Sunday and, and told me that, you know, Malcolm had been shot. And to me, and I think a lot of other black intellectuals, that was a declaration of war. It meant to us that, you know, America needed to be destroyed. You know, I mean, I, I remember, I felt that it was, you know, a declaration of war, you know, that, okay, this, you did this, so you definitely got to be paid back, you know, not only for all the things I can remember, but for specifically this. When we got to Harlem, it was sort of still and quiet, somewhat eerie. We met a lot of people whom we knew. Everybody walked. We talked. We greeted each other. But there was something subdued about the way we talked. Then up front, while everybody's eyes was fixed on the two men, uh, in the middle, the shotgun blast went off. Uh, at that time, I mean, there was utter chaos. People were screaming and, and hitting the floor. Uh, you could hear all the chairs coming down. But I saw a brother run up the stage, so I thought, oh, I'll follow him and see if I could get to Malcolm. But I met him twice, and the last time I met him, uh, we talked um, a long time, through the night, you know, uh, with Mohammed Babu and myself. and. He was trying to convince me that uh, uh, what we should do is uh, is try to, um, you know, um, politicize those organizations that we ran, you know. In other words, Malcolm, I think, had, had really understood 
had, had understood the, the whole role of the United Front, Black United Front. And when I got to him, well, he had fallen over backward, but he was flat on his back. I could see that he was hit many times. I thought there was only one or two shots, but it seemed like there was so uh, he already had so many wounds around his chest, one around here and one in his hands. I hoped that it wasn't serious, but already the way he was breathing or having difficulty breathing, we knew that it was serious. And each of us had our own best memory of him. And we felt guilty also that in spite of all the warnings and all the things that we knew were happening, the circle was closing, the trap was being sprung, somehow we had been unable to save him. We felt guilty about that. And we were a bit apprehensive, too, because we knew that there was an eerie quiet in the community which might explode every moment. But that afternoon, as the sun went down, and we walked the streets and the lights came on and everybody looked, we shook hands and we talked and we remembered. But we knew then that something greatly important to all of us was gone and it wouldn't be back again. And the essence of what he said to black people was self-determination, self-respect, self-defense. Can I help you, boys? Yes, sir. What room is Mr. O. Sejefo in? You don't seem to have anyone by the name of O. Uh, o. Oh, Se could you check Mr. Redeemer or Mr. Garvey? Ah, I'm sorry. Uh, are you sure you got the right hotel? What about a uh, Mr. Shabazz or a Mr. Luke? Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. What's your names? We were only requesting information as to what room a friend might be registered. Well, we don't give out that sort of information, comrades. We? And what is your name, comrade? Are you sure you boys got the right hotel? Maybe he's at the Maracana. Paul Robeson's uh, over there. No, sir. Perhaps we got here before he arrived. We're only requesting information, comrade. But we hope to see you again, comrade. What's this all about, Sammy, calling your comrade? Are you a commie or something? <laughs> no, sir. No, sir. We black people call each other all sorts of names these days. Well, they look like clean-cut young boys. I don't think they was boys at all. I think they done lived a long time.
brother? Last night. He's staying at the Waldorf. Did you hear that brainwashed nigga say, we don't give out information? <laughs> One of those deaf, dumb, and blind Negroes. Uh -huh. It was probably brainwashed by the prophet minister and his heathen teaching. That only means a slight delay. Yeah. To put the ultimate plan into effect. A more risky plan, though. A more dangerous. We have been chosen, comrade. It is the will of God. A higher power has ordained this mission. Talk to this brother, comrade. Brother man, this mission, as you call it, could change the course of human events. Some devil president said that Definitely at the hotel, comrade. Now listen. Comrade one and comrade two, you sit in the first row. You sit four rows back next to a brother in the green fez. Now the brother in the green fez will start a commotion. The guard will leave the victim. Comrade one and comrade two will move in on the victim. You move in with the shotgun. Now, there'll be four available cars. Now, one of these cars will be a taxi. And one car will drive one block to the nearest subway station. The wisdom of such a learned one fills me with courage, comrade. Listen, brothers. A man is born every day, and a man dies every day. This man. This hypocrite is trying to destroy our leader and our organization with his lies and propaganda. Yes, yes, teach, comrade. Yes, teach. Now, would you send the night porter up to my room? No, no, everything is fine. Uh, 417. Thank you.
I'm at the Hilton Hotel. It's 9 o'clock. You call the guest speakers, have them meet at the same place, at the usual time. Brothers and sisters, it is so nice to see so many of you here on this lovely Sunday afternoon. The purpose of today's meeting is to discuss what is going on on the continent of Africa in Angola and what is going on on the continent of America with the Afro-Americans. Now, we know that the CIA is financing white mercenaries in Angola. And as long as there are white people going over there and killing black people, Press, press is white. Press is very dangerous. The FBI, CIA. The FBI influences the press on a national scale. CIA influences them on an international scale. Yes? Comrade Samuel's property. I just felt that I, uh, like uh, Dan Watts, I was never a supporter of Dr. King. Come right in, Brother Samuels. Come right in. It's good to see you this fine morning. No. Come on, have a seat. Uh, for many reasons, uh, immediately after the King. God. Uh, Look at those funny-looking Negroes. Uh, what they talking about? Same old thing, Brother Samuels. Same old thing. They want to share the white man's corruption. They want to go down the drain with the beast. Some of our people are the same way. They just talk differently. People I love, and you know this, Brother Samuels, people I love tried to blow me and my family off the face of this earth. Tried to burn me alive. The last message I got from my source from Detroit was that they want my tongue mailed to them by the 26th of February. And they'll try to. So I have to continue my work. After all the problems and dirt, do you still believe? I'm sure those people wanted to do you harm last night. Who are those people that want you dead? Never be sure. If it was Africa, I'd know it was the people who killed the Moomba. But in this country, I don't know anymore. But one of my close associates, my bodyguard, is a CIA man. I know this in my blood. I feel it, but yet I can't accuse. So many people have so much to gain from me dying. The two men last night recognized me, and I recognized them, too. They're just puppets, brothers and sisters. Just puppets. But your life is in danger. I suggest you and your family travel. See the world. It's a big place for all kinds of people. Why don't you come by and say hello to the family before breakfast? I'm off on the man work now. I can drive you to the ballroom. Oh, thank you, Brother Samuels. I, I have my car. Why don't you join me for breakfast? 
thousand years and it hasn't it been great, the great. If you think Brother this Moore, is mythical, great. I tell you Moore, that great, great movements have always been have always been uh, motivated by some powerful myth. Yes. Prophet Minister. Yes, ma'am. One and the same. <gasps> I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Woman, why don't you watch what you're doing? You never give a black woman this kind of job. See? See how irresponsible they are? I'm sorry, please. I didn't mean anything by it. It's, it's just that I never... I never expected you to be in a, you know, a place... I'm sorry. Miss, why don't you get the silverware from the other table? So your boss won't know you dropped this. And bring us some coffee, please. Okay. Ah, oh, comrade. You've changed since your trip to Africa. Don't you ever believe, Brother Samuels, that I'll change before the American white man does. But do remember what Omar Khayyam said. The moving finger writes, and having writ, moves on. Nor all your piety and wit shall lure it back to cancel half a line, nor all your tears wash out one word of it. Pick up my wife and children. Meet me at the ballroom uptown at about 1.30. I have to stop by the professor's bookstore and pick up two books he's holding for me on Garvey. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Prophet Minister. Yes, Brother Samuels. Who is with us working with the beastly CIA? An interesting question, Brother Samuels. The people of China grew tired of the oppressors, and the people rose up against their oppressors. It was easy to say, the odds were against them, but 11 of them started out, and today those 11 control 800 million. They would have been told back then that the odds were against them. The oppressor always points out to the oppressed, the odds are against you. Fidel Castro was up in the mountains of Cuba. They told him, the odds were against him. Now he's in Havana, and all the powers of this country can't remove him. Time is on the side of the oppressed. Truth is on the side of the oppressed.
love for all mankind, sir. Please give this flower to someone you love, sir. Join us. Move with us. Rid this world of all hate and violence. Wear it with love. Thank you very much. How you doing? It's all there. Took care of myself. Didn't rely on the kids. You know, they too old to be loafing around in the park like that all the time. Well, history always repeats itself, doesn't it? Yeah. A lot of stuff they did back then, they doing it again. Well, I'll see you. All right. Take care. What you say, fella? Come on in. Come on. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Peace, brother. Hey, now. How are you feeling this fine morning, Professor? Oh, just fine, just fine. Cool as I can be. I got them books for you. Excellent. I got them in the back there, where I keep the good stuff. I like good wine. <laughs> yeah. Come on back here. Come on. Come on. You yes, are something sir. else. Very good to see you. <laughs> Sir, yeah, I, I, I've seen it all. That, uh, uh, that was, that was back in, that was back in '25 when, uh, when I got to call it. Uh, uh, yes, sir. There was, uh, 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 there was white folks dancing all over Harlem around then, uh, uh, around the Elks Club around there, and uh, uh, there's two or three of those uh, uh, theater groups that they had around there. Yes, sir. And then this little, this little dude, he, uh, 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 he, he came in from Chicago. And uh, 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 he, he was looking for something that he said would uh, uh, would aid his uh, 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 his organization. Uh, I can't remember his name for for the life of me. I mean, I can't think of what his name is. Well, anyhow, he said that uh, uh, if I start collecting uh, uh, books uh, uh, about colored people, <laughs> you know, they didn't call them black then. You call them black, <laughs> man, they want to kill you. Well, anyhow, if I collected these books about uh, 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 colored people, he'd be able to transmit it to others. And he said, in 10 years' time with these books, <laughs> I'd be smarter than any white man. That's a real rose? You heard they want to kill me. You fellas live so dangerously, uh, comrade. You know that other fella? He was in here two or three weeks uh, uh, before he got killed. You, you remind me of him so much. You and him got ways so much alike. That's a real rose. Why do you think they want to kill me? I can't believe it's as obvious as I want to open a storefront church. Some fools may think a single man's important, because white folks say so. If white folks says he's important, then he is important. Then you folks think he's important. Black folks are jealous as hell. 
Why you think they killed uh, 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 them, them Kennedy children and, and Evers and, uh, and, and Martin and them? Just jealousy and hate, boy. That's what I'm only a minister. A minister in a religion most people in this country haven't heard about. So don't, don't class me with Evers and King and them, please. Keep these books wrapped up. It's dangerous if people know you're reading them. Well, apparently I'm dangerous already. Well, I, I, I guess everybody knows uh, you know what's uh, in, in those books. But uh, uh, you got to be careful about uh, letting people know uh, uh, everything you know. That's what happened to them prophets. Which prophets are you talking about, Professor? Jeremiah, Isaiah, Amos, Jose, them Israelite prophets. I'd better get out of here before you have me swimming in the head. I'll see you at the ballroom? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll be there, but, you know, like I said to the folks, like I told all them folks, hey, that, that place has got a jinx on it. Couldn't you all find no other place? Well, not for $125. Listen, you try to get there around 2 o'clock. I'll have some of the brothers save a seat for you, okay? Uh oh. Okay, good buddy. Okay, you take care you, of yourself. Yeah, you do too. I'll try. Place is a madhouse, Prophet Minister. You have visitors from Africa and Mecca. Those two. FBI. Has Brother Samuels arrived with my wife and children? No, sir. No, sir. Should I call a check? Yes, sir. I'll talk to the FBI men first. Then I will talk to our distinguished guests. This way, gentlemen. Sorry to keep you waiting, but. We weren't expecting you. There's no answer at your house, Prophet Minister. It'll be about 20 minutes. Was he expecting you? Yes. When he was in Ghana three weeks ago, I told him I would be in America. We talked last week when he visited Mecca. Hello. He's in conference, brother. Uh, maybe 25 minutes. Sorry to bother you like this, but we have no choice in the matter. You guys work on Sunday. I didn't know that. Well, what seems to be a problem? We've been reading a lot about you. And some of the things you have said could be considered. Well, offensive. Some of the things happening to black people in this country are offensive. We don't want to debate with you, sir. Honestly, we're just trying to do our job. You talked about historical landmarks and how they should be destroyed. Well, some of your people are, did exactly that. The Liberty Bell in Philadelphia, the Statue of Liberty off Staten Island. Well, human lives, I like what the you're going to say, but we're doing all we can on that. Was the guy who blew up the um, Liberty Bell a friend or a member of your organization? What guy? His name was, is, I give you so many damn names, I want to be correct, Smith. His name is John Smith. I never heard of him. Certainly no member of our church would take part in anything illegal. But you know that, don't you? Well, brother. In one hour, you can set up 400 chairs yourself. Well, do you understand that we have to 
follow through on things, even if we don't believe. You see, well, since the assassination... The assassination is history. You come in here talking about the Liberty Bell and the Statue of Liberty, and all the time you know that I would never stoop so low as to take part in any such act. Mr. Smith said that you were his leader. When did he say that? When we caught him. Well, an officer questioned him, and he said he was working under your orders. The man's crazy. But you do understand, we have to follow every clue. You know someone is trying to kill me? I wish you would follow that clue. There's an FBI man in my organization. You know about that? Why don't you do something about that? Black people are being killed in this country every day. Why don't you do something about that? No, you come in here telling me something insane about someone who is obviously crazy. Maybe we could do something. Maybe. I don't want to build up your hopes, but if you were willing to sign a paper saying... I won't sign anything. Well, <clears throat> could you help us by giving us some information on some of the people? We have a list of names the Bureau is very interested in knowing more about. Well, why don't you ask them? Because we have reasons to believe that the same ones that are trying to kill you are the same people. But we can't do anything. Until they make them move, until they... Until they kill me, right? You people know me well enough to know that I won't give you any information because I don't have any information. My life is an open book. You have people following me everywhere I go, and you know as well as I do who's trying to kill me. Well, let's look at it this way. We'd be willing to pay for any inconvenience this information might cause you. You people are as crazy as hell. You know I can't be bought. Well, maybe you'd like to have this. You'd be in your rights to accept it. We are the FBI, and we have the right to give you this. I would suggest you leave. I have a lot of work to do. I have to prepare for my speech. I hope you two will join the other law enforcement agents this afternoon at the ballroom, 2 o'clock. Oh, yeah, we'll be there. And since you don't want the gun, here, take this little device. You spray it in the perpetrator's face, and he's instantly blinded. And that's going to stop a murderer? Please, leave my office. Let me decide my reason for being. We can support your organization. What you taught us on your visit to Ghana is without question a revelation, brother. We, too, suspected CIA infiltration. Your visit moved so many away from Christianity. To Islam? No, my friend. To the contrary, away from religion altogether. We believe that Islam and Allah has brought us world riches. Both of you have a means of power. Now, you, Mr. Ahmed, have a country rich in oil something the white world needs, so you have power. You, Mr. Lupito, have a country rich in natural resources, so the world needs you. Both of you have power in a manner of speaking. All the black American has is the teachings of the white man, the knowledge of what he is. Prophet Minister, I am here too because I believe the majority of the world's population is of darker people. I welcome this opportunity to invite you to Ghana to head our university. We invite you to Mecca to learn the ways of Allah, to experience the riches. My country and my president want you. Oh, I'll 
I'll stay here. I appreciate your offer. Thank you. You can be the Imam. As chairman of the OAU, I'm speaking for Gowan, Mr. Obute, Mr. Kenyatta, Mr. Nyerere. We need you. Need all you represent. Will the OAU back me if I bring formal charges against the United States and the UN? Brother Minister, listen to me, please. Listen very carefully. Many of us depend on American aid and American investments. White Americans are all over our country. They are everywhere. Do you understand me? One. How do you like their fitness? They've been training very hard. Fitness is superb. Can you check their stomach muscles? Sure. Hey! <laughs> very good. The home office will be pleased. I've been ready for three weeks. Can we get out of here? Easy, comrade. It's only one o'clock. We've got time. Please excuse us. Brothers, you are acting like deaf, dumb, and blind Negroes. Time is upon us, and I know you're frightened. But there is no shame in that. Today is today. We're ready. Our phone was disconnected. I think the wire was cut. Yes, he's with me right here. I'm fine. The children are fine, too. You all right? Yes, I'm fine. Look, don't come here. Have Brother Samuels take you directly to the ballroom. I'll get there by 2 o'clock. Yes. Yes. So it's almost time to leave for the Audubon Ballroom. Brother Stephen is taking our guest downtown. He'll meet you at the hall. Okay. Comrade, I want to thank you for all you've done for me and for the organization. Why do they hate you so, sir? Well, I think I must have hurt someone very badly. He and I understand each other very well. He looks on me as a son. I made the mistake of growing up. You must always remember this. You are your own man. As you grow older, read everything. But only believe what you can see and feel. What you did was not wrong. Your father reacted because he loves you. Respect that. I hate him. I wish you were my father. I really do, Mr. Minister. 
And one day, one day I will be head of this organization. And I will always honor you, sir. You're so young. But I do understand the book, sir. And I understand your teachings. And I will teach as you are teaching. Yeah. Please tell me that I can't, that I won't, that I fail, that I'll never make it out, yeah Please tell me all the bad, never good, fill my head full of every single doubt, yeah Please say any negative thoughts, I pop off when I hear people say I cannot I get off to the thought of proving everyone wrong, I won't stop to the top, so you better back off and get lost I'ma stay loud, stay proud, never running out, never heading south I'll be spreading out, call it word of mouth, can't put me down, I'll be getting loud You can never doubt, not what I'm about, have your f***ing cloud, it be raining now I keep making sound, go another round, I'm legend bound, can't stop me now you don't wanna fuck with me A slow burn like a disease Just tell me that I can and I'll show you things that you And the owner's personal friend, partner and business associate and advisor Chief Alex Agayi I know you want to hear them, and so I'm going to turn the microphone over to my brother. Good afternoon, you good people of Harlem City. Congratulations on a happy Harlem week. We are brought to you the son of Africa. Charity begins at home. Be it never so humble. There is no home. There is no place like home. Africa is our home. Say it loud. Africa is our home. Say it loud. I would like to recognize among us here the presence of representatives from Oyoko Kingdom and the presence of multiple representatives from New York City. The minister, you need a ride to the bar? We got room. Come on, get in the car, minister. Thank you very much. I hope this won't put you out of it, Mr. Williams. How are you, Brother Williams? Fine, Brother. We are honored to have you in our car, Brother. And we're looking forward to your solution on black survival in this devil's outhouse.
Precinct. Yeah. Yeah. Our policemen have been pulled off the rally. Are you sure? Yes, but who told you to pull them off? All right, all right, fine. Officer Brown, can I see you for a minute? Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Our men were pulled off the rally at Autobahn by prophet ministers, people. Big mistake. He's a marked man. You better get somebody out there immediately. Maybe we can station across the street or something. Speakers arrive yet? Brother Jean, I'm talking to you. I'm sorry, Minister. They all called. They can't make it. I hate to be the one to have to bring you that news. Yes. What's the problem? Uh, can I go check to see if the other bodyguards are. No. Let it go. Sister Williams, they'll be fine. Could I talk to you a minute before you go out there? Uh, gentlemen, would you excuse us, please? I want you to know that I am aware of the hatred that's out there against you. What you're going through to overcome it. I know I'll telephone where I was cut, that I've been followed for over the past two months. Do you know who they are? Who set our house on fire? Who cut the wire? Yes. But can we do anything? Are you going to die? I love you. I do believe I'll love you forever. Here he is, the prophet minister, a man who would give his life for you and for your self-determination and freedom. Let's hear it, brothers and sisters. Let's hear it. to you, brothers and sisters. killed my husband. They killed my husband. He was our hope, our youth, our blackness, and our promise. 
His words were what we thought but seldom dared to say. He forced us to change our meaning and our frame of reference and reminded us that in order to be free, we must first be men, even if, like him, we had to die for it.